All right, welcome back everyone. Welcome to the last public session, uh, public version of these sessions uh, from November 2nd, we will be moving to the subscription option. And for those watching the recording, um, if you're watching this recording on YouTube, the link and information and everything is in the description below. And if you are watching this on our website, uh, you will find the information at the top of the top of this page. All right, so let's start by going straight into the superpower state. So take a deep breath and either close your eyes or leave them open, whichever you prefer. And go into your superpower state, however you normally do that. Using your word or phrase or your anchor or by focusing in on everything you love and appreciate about your subject. Very good. And start to feel your heart open, that expansion feeling in your chest. As that light or energy shines through you. Very good. <clears throat> And then allow that light or energy to spread down to your toes, up to the top of your head and out to your fingertips. So you're now full of that light, that energy, that love. Very good. And allow that light or energy to fill each of the 50 trillion cells that make up your body. Love each cell just for existing. <clears throat> and imagine that light or energy being produced by each of your cells, every cell of your body shining out unconditional love, loving you unconditionally. Very good. And then allow light or energy to fill the little you, yourself as a child, any age. Love that little you just for existing. No judgment, no expectations, just for existing, no matter what. Very, very good. And then allow that light or energy to overflow from that little you and fill your whole childhood. Shining that light into any darkness, loving everything, everyone, every experience, every event, every circumstance, no matter what. Feeling that power as you do that, like a little superhero, shining that light, good job. And then allow that light or energy to fill everyone who's on the call today, all those who are on camera, all those who are off camera today, loving each one just for existing, no matter what. Very, very good. All right, you can open your eyes if you haven't closed. Lovely to see you all. Um, so just to let you know, Steve is in a session with a one-to-one -one client at the moment, so he, it was running a little bit late, so he will be joining us when that's finished. All right, so let's check in with each person, find out how you're doing. So Lisa, how are you today? Happy early Halloween. <laughs> yeah, to you. <laughs> I'm going to read from, um, this is a Louise Hay book. I found this last night and I thought I'd read it. Okay, so... One of the bonuses about loving yourself is that you get to feel good. Mm -hmm. So my love is limitless. We have so much love in this world and we have so much love in our hearts. And sometimes we forget. Sometimes we think there isn't enough or there is just a small amount. So we hoard what we have or we're afraid to let it go. We're afraid to let it out. 
But those of us who are willing to learn realize that the more love we allow to flow out from us, the more there is within us and the more we receive. It is endless and timeless. Love is really the most powerful healing force that there is. Without love, we could not survive at all. So most of us think we can survive without love, but we cannot. For ourselves, love for ourselves is the power that heals us. And do it as much as you can all day long. <laughs> right. Perfect. And then I would add to that, make sure that that love is unconditional. So okay. that... So I have a friend. Okay. <laughs> so I thought I'd show you the friend. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, Lisa, for sharing that. That's fantastic. As always, you Thank always you. good ones. <laughs> All right. And then Swasti. Hi, Swasti. How are you today? Um, <clears throat> I'm good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, much better than last time. So yesterday I had a training session um, for like what, the job that I got. So really? it was like, yeah, so it was the whole day. Um, and so I've been using Trello. Uh, oh, how have you done that? Yeah, so it's really, really good. Because, yeah, like I said, I was using um, like another app, but you couldn't shift, like you couldn't move things around. So just seeing it in priority and everything's pretty nice. It's really, really good. So it yeah. helped me as well as changing references, of course. Good, good, good job, sweetheart. I'm so happy. So I, yeah, I could fit everything in and it seems less like <laughs> bombardful. <laughs> Fantastic. Good job, you. Thank you. Um, but a question I had today. So this was regarding, well, like your subscription thing. Mm -hmm. So basically, my parents said, you know, my parents had this issue that based, like people in India, like my cousins, they spend money on things that almost like voodoo and witchcraft and things, you right. know, they, that, that kind of belief. So something wrong. So, you know, when I told my parents that, you know, I want to, like, do the subscription thing, they were like, no. <laughs> um, even though, you know, I've got a job now, so I can kind of pay. Um, but I found that kind of embarrassing in the moment. But then I realized it's just references. Like, it's fine. You can talk about it. Um, so I just felt this immediate, like, betrayal and almost, yeah, I just felt betrayal mostly. Right. <clears throat> betrayal by your parents yeah and just like miss on not understanding and I can never talk to them freely about anything it seems like all right okay and so um uh so first of all um so I've got a thought in my head um and I'm not sure how private it is so that's why I'm hesitating to actually say it but um so let's let's put that aside for the moment um and let's just uh look at that feeling of betrayal all right so you so your parents don't um so they for whatever reason they don't believe in this or they don't they they don't feel yeah. that is that mm -hmm. right so why is that a betrayal what what how how does it mean betrayal to you mm, so it's like they believe in just hard work and grinding and they don't believe in like it's science you know it is <laughs> but they don't um so why it feels like betrayal yeah just not sharing like the same beliefs and that's not betrayal <laughs> yeah so that's why i'm trying to identify um what exactly is um you know what how you're interpreting it as betrayal but it feels like betrayal to you yeah okay all right so let's go with that um and so let's see um that feeling of betrayal anything come up from your childhood even if it doesn't appear to make sense um yeah it's like well, it's just an image of like um, school and people going to school. Okay. And um, what, what about people going to school? I don't know. It's just me like by my front door watching people go to school. I see. Okay. And so as you're by your front door watching people go to school, what uh, can you go with them? No. You're not going with them? Mm -hmm. No. 
Okay. No, so I can't just imagine that right now. Okay. And, and so what is it that's stopping you from going with them? Um, oh, it's like my grandma and my aunt is just holding me. Oh, good. You're just cool. Fantastic. Excellent. All right. So let's look at that. So can you um, step into that memory as the adult you, as you are now, and tell your aunt and your grandmother that it's okay for that little you to go to school and let her go with the other kids. And if you can't do that, that's okay. We'll, we'll move somewhere else. No, it's very much like pushy, shovey type. <laughs> All right, very good. So let's look at um, your grandmother and your aunt. What are they feeling? Why, why are they holding you, uh, keeping you from going to school? What's, what's going on for them? Um, I think that, I think uh, this was kind of like I've done this before, or you know, bits of it I left. But it's like uh, being too young to go to school, so trying oh. to go to school when you're like two years old or something. Oh. Just just wanting to be like with others even though they're older than you. Very good, that's perfect, isn't that great? Okay, so now I want you to see if you can, in fact, give that little you a magic wand and let her wave the magic wand and the uh, your aunt and your grandmother are saying, yes, of course you can go to school and they give you a little lunch box and a little suitcase, I mean, um, you know, school bag or whatever, and uh, with your favorite um, cartoons or characters on it, mm -hmm. and you get to join, the, and the others are going, yes, come with us, come with us, and you go to school with them. Can you do that? Um, okay, so I'll try. No, it's always like, it's always one of them, uh, like one, so one of the auntie or the grandma who's kind of not letting it happen. Very good. Okay. So um, did they go to school? No. Well, part of school. Okay, so my auntie didn't want to go to school, so okay. she didn't go to school. Um, like when she should have, like she didn't, she didn't complete her education. And then my grandma couldn't go to school because she had to take care of her siblings. Oh, well, there it is. So you need to change their childhoods so that mm -hmm. they got to go to school. And this is for everybody who has any school kind of memory, especially those very young ones, make sure that the child is loving, you know, they, they're excited to go to school and the parents are enthusiastic and giving them nice things to take to school with them. So, like I said, the lunchbox, the bag, the stationery, the, you know, things that make school more fun and more enjoyable and things that other kids are going to look at and go, oh, you're so lucky to have that. I, where can I go? Why haven't I got, you know, so they've, they, you've got that feeling of I have these things and everybody wants to be me and wants to be like me and wants to, you know, is admiring me what I have so uh, you know nice clothes um, you know whatever it is so make sure that your aunt and your grandmother both have that in their childhood mm -hmm. and they are top of the class from young they were allowed to go to school when they were little because they thought it because it's fun oh yeah have to make it fun yeah Yes, yeah. fun, fun, fun. A and in, in addition to that, remember, because there's no logical reason in the subconscious and it can't judge anything as unrealistic, you can add whatever you like into school. Mm -hmm. So you could add a water park at school. You could add um, horse riding, um, you know, celebrities visiting or teaching, um, trampolines. You just add whatever would make that experience fun. Mm, okay how does yeah, that really good. yeah I was missing the fun bit nobody found school fun right yes, yes even yes. people who excelled like did not find it fun <laughs> right and for those who who know and like Mary Poppins for example 
let Mary Poppins teach this. She runs the school. She's the headless or, or whoever would be fun in charge so that everything is about fun that you know it's it's it, so the attitude of the um the councils and whoever runs the school you know, the the education boards and everything is that children learn when they have fun and so that's the whole everything is is based on that which is true yeah which is absolutely true yeah, yeah. okay How does uh, that okay. yeah that sounds pretty good um, so do that first and then of course you're you know go back to that scene where you're watching the other kids go to school and see if you can change it then that they're giving you whatever they had mm -hmm. so they're, they're enthusiastic they're excited for you you know so, so I remember when my son went to school I was I was beside myself with excitement and I said to him I want to come can I come with you I promised you choir. <laughs> you know, because so have that where you, where the parents and the grandparents and the aunt and everything are very excited about you going to school. Mm, okay. All right. Good job. And then, um, and then once you've done that, then come back to your parents and see how you feel about them. You know what they're saying, uh, what the decision is, or what their attitude is, or their beliefs are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, can I just quickly ask one thing? So recently, uh, while I was working on, oh yeah, just this topic that I'm talking about now, uh, while trying to work on it. But so this random memory of, so I always think that uh, <laughs> if you get married, then people are going to betray you. Um, so it was just a random, like, visual of two people just leaving. Oh, it wasn't. I didn't know them. It yeah. seemed like it was from TV or something. So what? How oh. can you tell those are actual references and not just something random? So when the, the the random things like from TV, films, whatever else, your you know social media or whatever, <clears throat> will mostly be excluded. Well, well, will be excluded. Oops. Um unless there's a reference for them or that that makes it important so otherwise your brain will just filter out what's not important what doesn't apply <clears throat> excuse me so the fact that it is having an impact or that it's come up for you means that wherever you got it from there's a reference for it which is why your brain has grabbed it and gone this is important does that make sense yeah that makes sense okay this relates to my grandma's marriage which has ah. resulted in my aunties having issues with their marriages, like right now. <clears throat> oh, well, there you go. Yes, that makes perfect sense. Mm, okay. So then change those, of course. Yeah. Change it so that they had, you know, the most loving, fun. Make sure that all your memories, every, this is for everybody, make sure that all your memories include fun. Mm -hmm. Because fun is a, is a, 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 a strong emotion a strong feel-good emotion and it gives that injection to you know rather than just it was a nice it was a nice time or they were kind they were kind compassionate and fun okay yeah uh, so then their marriage was was a lot of fun as well they were always you know playing the fool and teasing each other or you know having doing things together they would go dancing together they would play games together um, and it was always fun to be at their house. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Good job. Thank you. You're very welcome. Did you have any other questions before me? Oh, yeah. Thank you. You're very welcome. And Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. Oh, nice to see you, Swasti. Uh, um, I can only see the per person who's talking. So hello to everyone else also. Um, so. I have um, one thing I'd like you to target is um, just my health and well-being, because um, I it's a long story, but I I ended up having to switch doctors um, unexpectedly, and I have a new doctor, but I'm not as confident. So lately, I've just been having a little fear surrounding that. Um, 
so I would like if you could to target that. But the other the other thing that I'm, so, I'm work, Cheryl, working on. Carol, I'm so sorry to interrupt you because Steve's not sure. here. I'm just um, making a note of the targets myself. So Oh, so, sure. Go right ahead. While you were uh, saying that, I actually was looking for something to write with. So <laughs> I wasn't paying That's attention. That's okay. So your target is Dr. Just, just my health. Your health. My health, oh. please. But um, so something that I've been working on is um, trying to be to get support from people in my life mm -hmm. because I don't have that. So I know I have a friend, Sue, and I adore her and she is so supported. It is so amazing. And it just makes me feel so happy when she tells me like she was in a relationship for 10 years and, and she got suddenly broken up with, but, but like similar to like when I just lost my house, and I, I did get a place, but she has like these people, well, mostly men, but like just swoop in and say, I have this apartment for you. And, or they swoop in and they say like, I've got this job for you. Like, it's amazing. And um, I don't know, it just makes me so happy because she's really sweet and she really deserves it and everything. But then I keep saying to myself, oh, maybe I can, um, you know, I told her, I said, oh, I want to be like you and get you know, how do you do it? And she's like, what do you mean? And so she doesn't even really reckon. It's almost like she, it's just natural to her to be supported. So I'm like, she doesn't really, she's like, wow, you don't feel supported. I'm like, no. So it took one visit from my brother uh, while she was here for her to understand why I don't feel supported. So I'm trying to, um, the brothers are definitely, like a, a key thing right now, as far as my anxiety, right. um, they're just absolutely clueless. Uh, I mean, I lost my husband of 30 years and I haven't seen them really and hadn't seen them in like six months. Mm -hmm. Um, and anyway, they're just not, they're just not supportive. Mm -hmm. And, um, one of my brothers, I'm also, I don't have a job right now. So, and I still haven't gotten unemployment. So financially things are really icky. Right. And so my brother came and Kate called and said, oh, would you like to go to lunch? And um, so finally this time he accepted that I said I wanted it to be outdoor seating because I really haven't been out. Anyway, we went to lunch. He drops like a hundred dollars on, he had like 10 drinks in a short period of time and dropped like a $30 tip on the, you know, he's just throwing money around, which is his right to do. But when I got home, I thought, wow, wouldn't it have been great if he just came over and visited out on the porch and gave me some of that money so I could get groceries this week. So like, I, and I know that was my perception, like, oh, I'm not supportive of my, from my brothers. So I'm trying to rewrite them being supportive of me. And I'm having a hard time of it because it's just so, I just really wasn't supported, you know? So I'm working on that. Now, I want to say that two good things did happen. I mean, there are, there is evidence that I'm supported. Like I got this house to rent. Um, and then my mom wrote me a check this week and I've never cashed one of her checks ever. And I, I just cashed it right before this group. So that just so I could say I cashed it. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Well done. <laughs> and um, so that was, that was a very uh, supported thing. And then my daughter is also helping me out. Good. So uh, I don't, I don't know where I'm stuck. All right. So let's look at the, so, so um, there's a few different pieces here. And the first piece I want to just ask about is when you say, you've never cashed one of your mom's checks before why not what what's what's that story what's that going what's going on well, there? i i've always had so i used to back in the day i when i was in college even i used to get checks from people for cleaning their houses and they would be like when are you going to cash the check i would hold on to the check and i wouldn't cash it i kind of do that with other things too now I like it switched off of money into something else there's 
it's like a feeling of lack like yes there is. say i buy yeah like say i buy um something that i like let's say i all right i'm gonna say kale i know nobody really cherishes kale but let's say i have some nice organic kale i have let it rot in the refrigerator because i haven't eaten it because i'm waiting to have it because I, when i want it i want to be able to have it so it's i switch from money to food but it's that's right and you're not alone that that is that is something that, that a lot of people have so um so do you see though where do you see how that is manifesting in your life because the support is there you're just not wanting it or right not, not conscious i mean consciously you want it but right. your, your subconscious is going nope don't help me don't help me yes yeah okay. and so your uh, the way you speak the tone of voice the your expressions all of that un, unknown unknown to you the the micro expressions and tones of voice and that will be eliciting that from other people when you speak to people you're not aware of it but they're picking up oh i don't want to I don't want to interfere or I don't want to, you know, she'll right. be offended or maybe or something like that. But you don't realize that that's what's going on. Yeah. So, so, um, so that this is fantastic because you can change it, of course. And so that feeling of, and that feeling of I'm holding on to it, you know, that feeling of lack and holding on to it until it goes off or until the check is no longer valid or whatever that uh, of course is coming from fear and that uh, feeling and that attitude will be resulting in lack in your life because that's of course what uh, you know the the state you're in so mm -hmm. um so well done first of all for number one turning up and number two bringing this here so we can sort it out mm -hmm. so that feeling of lack that feeling of so uh, let me ask you this if your brother had given you money yesterday what would you how would you have felt and what would you have said i think um i would have taken it if he gave me money okay and what how would you have felt about taking it okay so the re the thought i just had when i said that was i will take it because he owes me money anyway because mm -hmm. there was a a situation where when my father died there was a house that we were all supposed to sp split the money from. Mm -hmm. And it became, you know, as always, as it always does in families, um, you know, the house, let's say, was appraised for $100. Mm -hmm. um, but they said, oh, we've been here, we've done a lot of improvements. So we're going to, we're just going to split it at $25. Mm -hmm. And so I just went along with whatever they said because I didn't want to fight over money because it money it is really isn't important as the relationship but i guess in my mind i think that is why i would take the money because i feel like well i you know i get i let you have the money mm -hmm. before so i would take the money from him but not like in a in an angry way but more just like i feel like it would be owed to me so it would be okay okay all right so and there's so there's some programs there as well so first of all it's not always the case in families. Some families it is, but well, that's true. <laughs> yeah. So which is a good thing to remember because the feeling like it's always that's the case always means that that's the the way you see yeah. it in, in re, recreate. Wow, I didn't yeah, I didn't even catch that. Very good. And so um your brothers, what experiences in your childhood did you have with your brothers along these themes anything come up that's similar well i had three brothers all younger and my oldest brother and i were close he was kind and my middle brother and i who is this one who went to lunch we fought all the time mm -hmm. um bumped heads but he and i also are can be very close on other levels and then my youngest brother is the one that I took care of. I named him, you know, he was younger than me. Yeah. So, but they, you have to know that they're all, we were, I was raised in a house where it was very, you know, misogynistic, very, you know, the women are second class, 
right? So that's where um, I think the problems now arise because, you know. Okay. And so how did you, do you have any memories of learning about the fact that women are second class? What, how was that represented early? Oh gosh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Lots of memories of that. Um, well, like my dad, I mean, I remember being five and thinking I was fat because my dad used to say stuff about my mother's body all the time. Right. He made fun of her flat chest. Okay. And she wasn't even flat. So oh. things like that, you know. But that is key. So when you when you're wondering where to start, that's where to start. Okay. So go go there and change that. Now you will probably need to change your dad's childhood because the reason he was like that will be from his childhood, of course. Mm. Right? Yeah. You may need to change his childhood so that he was raised by two uh, parents who absolutely doted on him and taught him, you know, that everyone is valuable. We're all connected. So all of the spiritual stuff that you know now, have your dad's parents teach him that. Okay. All right. Have have them teach him that and have, uh, you know, create little memories of him as a child experiencing that, experiencing love and kindness and compassion for everyone and from everyone. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. And then he would have grown, you can imagine the kind of person he would have grown into. And yeah. then treated your mum the same way he was treated and the way he saw his parents treat each other. And then he would have, of course, that would have affected you. Yeah. And one thing about my mom, which is uh, pretty cool. I mean, she's get she's get getting, you know, she has dementia. So she's in the beginning of dementia. But um, all her life, like he treated her like crap. And then when he died, she'd be like, oh, there's only one man for me. I'll never date. And I was just like, oh, so. But the other day when I saw her, I, I don't know if it's the dementia. I don't know what it is, but she said to me, oh, she goes, if I could, because I used to say to her mom, if if only you had married this guy or that guy, because she had men falling at her feet, you know, and there was one guy who had like pulled up to a beautiful house and said, I'm building this for you. Will you marry me? Mm-hmm. So she, anyway, the other day she said to me, boy, I would have done things a lot differently. I would have married that guy with the big house and I, you know, I would have told your father to go packing. And I thought, oh, this is great. My mother is, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, she's, she's feeling a little better about herself. Yeah. All right. Then you want to, so, so once you changed your dad's childhood and your dad, when he was a father, these pieces also need to be addressed, of course, and they may change automatically, but if not, because what you're aiming to end up with is that you're able to love your dad exactly as he was. Just your unconditional love. And of course, having changed the childhood memories as well. But in addition to that, that you don't have this, because this feeling of, you know, you should have married somebody else, or it's a shame you didn't, whatever regrets are there, whatever those feelings are, are of course not, you know, they're not doing anything outside of you. They're just producing, as you think that, they're producing stress chemicals in you. Oh. And something that can help is that if your mom hadn't married your dad, you wouldn't be here. Hmm. And so at the very, very least, it took him and her getting together for you to be born. Right? Mm -hmm. This is your biological dad, yeah? Yes, and Odile, when he uh, passed away, Mm -hmm. I found out my mother, poor mother, he never married my mom. And we never, we never knew. So that was a hard thing, too, you know, to. Well, now, and that's also interesting. So thank you for bringing that up. Because uh, what does it mean that he, because some people don't get married, doesn't mean anything to them. Well, they went away to get married. She Mm -hmm. wanted to get married. And I guess the place was closed. And so then they just came back and told everyone they were married and he just wouldn't get married. Right. Okay. And, and he was married twice before or, or he was married 
I don't know if it was once or twice, honestly. Okay. So, so you want to change that as well so that they did get married. They were so same thing as what I've um, shared with Swasti um, with the grandparents and the parents. They had a wonderful marriage and it was fun. And they okay. were so much in love. They were very affectionate. Um, they were, you know, encouraging and kind and compassionate to each other. Build that, you know, build a foundation of that so that you've really got that. Um, I'm just, hi, Steve. I'm just making you co-host. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, so that's going to be crucial. Okay. The thing you're experiencing now. Okay, I hadn't even thought of that. So thank you for getting me there to that. Very, very welcome. Very welcome. So that's foundational stuff. And then, of course, your brothers, the way they are now is, of course, from their childhood mm. and, and affected by your dad and the relationship between your mom and dad. And they may, you know, who knows what programs they've got and what's going on in the background for them. So again, if your dad's childhood was different and your mum and dad had a happy, loving, respectful, wonderful marriage, your brothers would undoubtedly have been different. Okay. And then when I say like with the kale or let's say ice, I don't know, I, something, I have some vegan ice cream. So mm -hmm. what is there something I can say to myself or remind myself so that I encourage myself to take it and enjoy it and not worry about running out? Yes, indeed. So uh, I would say the first, uh, in fact, let's do this right now. Let's clear this right now. So as you think about that ice cream, for example, and you think about eating it now or straight after the session, what, what feelings come up for you? Well, I automatically think, okay, I'll have a little bit and then I'll have a little cone now and then I'll be able to have a, a cone, you know, tomorrow maybe, you know, how many days will this ice, you know, this whatever, this treat last me. So now I want you to think you're going to eat it all now. And oh. <laughs> no, I couldn't. <laughs> it would be gone. <laughs> you couldn't because it was too much to fit in your tummy? Or no, because it would, well, it would be gone. It would be gone. Perfect. That feeling. Now let's separate it from the meaning and separate the physical sensation. So where in your body do you feel that feeling of it would be gone? Oh, I just feel like I want it and it's not there. Good. Isn't <laughs> it brilliant? Do you see the connection? Yes. Childhood. Yeah. You want the affection. You want the attention. You want the the respect you want yeah. your mum your dad all of that i've got waves of goosebumps as i'm saying that so yeah that is perfect cheryl okay so then you do in your childhood but you get there's always more than enough your parents are always there both of them and when you walk in the room so very important for everybody to create these memories you walk in the room and your parents drop what they're doing. They stop talking. They stop on the. They're on the phone. They put this. I'm sorry. I'll have to call you back. Hey, sweetheart. And their full attention is always on you. All right. How does that sound? That sounds wonderful. <laughs> and so that's very, very important for everyone because that is a really strong foundation of feeling safe, which is the most the top priority. Mm. So, and safe, um, you know, uh, it, it means you have always got more than enough than, that you need. And in particular, attention, kindness, compassion, uh, affection from your parents. Okay. Sound good? Very good. Thank you. Good job, Cheryl. You're very welcome. And then what, what I'd like you to do is, so establish that. So change your dad's childhood. So everything we said before. And then create this foundation of every time you walk in the room, your parents are fully focused on you. There's always an abundance of encouragement, support, fun, love, respect, mm. passion and kindness and all of that. And then once you've done that and you've practiced it, so it feels established, then think about the ice cream again. And okay. just imagine eating the whole lot and just notice what happens. And okay. what 
aiming for is you don't have to eat all of it, but you want to get to the point where when you think of eating all of it, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you can decide you want it, you don't want it. It doesn't matter, but you, you're not being controlled by that. Okay. Sound good? Sounds very good. Thank you so much. You're, you're very welcome. And that will, that will um, extend out to feeling supported in all areas, including money and everything else. Yes, I'm ready for that chapter. <laughs> good. good job, Cheryl. I'm very excited for you. Thank you very much. You're very welcome, sweetheart. All right. And then I believe we have, uh, so um, Steve, I have one target if you could add to the list. Oh, where did I put it? I put it in a notepad. So the target um, is for Cheryl. She would like to target her health, please, if you could add that to the uh, target list. Thank you. And then let's look at the questions. So scrolling up. And Sadia says, um, greetings everyone. Today's will mark the beginning of another super exciting process with emotional fitness from your couch. Um, what an amazing process it has been. I can't jump on the call with video now, but I really wanted to, uh, wanted to say thank you for this amazing experience, Odile and Steve, and I'm really excited for the upcoming step. Oh, you're very welcome, Sadia. And thank you so much for, um, for saying that. That's lovely to hear. And you're very, very welcome. Um, Natasha, question. A little more help with being the writer, director, and actor in the childhood memories when trying to increase the feelings of fun, confidence, and all the good feelings. So, um, Steve, actually, can I unmute you? Will you answer that? Because that is your kind of area, being the writer, director, and actor is, is your kind of um, technique. So, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, it's, you know, you're really what you're doing is just getting into a new mindset. So, if you think about <clears throat> if you think about the fact that we have pretty much always been just the main character, the main actor in the show that's been going on. And um, even though I haven't been a professional actor, Odile has been, um, when you think about a professional actor on a movie set or on a stage production, actors really have the least amount of power in the show. They just show up, they get their script, they get their costumes, they get their marks, and they basically just follow the directions. So what we want to do is to move beyond just being the actor. We're going to continue to be the main actor in, the, in, our, in our show, in our production. But now we also want to become somebody like a Clint Eastwood or some of these other uh, actors who've gone on to become the writers, the directors, the producers of the entire production. So as we start to change, what we're doing here is we're changing these old programs. We're rewriting the backstory. We're, we're stopping the production and saying, you know what, I, I don't like the direction of this movie anymore. And now that I have complete production control of this show, I want the audience to leave this production feeling this way. So instead of the way that the movie has been leaving the audience feeling, it's like, we know what that feeling is. We go through our life, we go through our day, we get, it's like, oh, my life just sucks. Oh, you know, it's terrible. It's that feeling you get after watching the movie. It's like, oh, that's terrible. <laughs> I don't want the audience to feel that way anymore. I want the audience to feel empowered, happy, joyful, um, abundant, whatever those things are that you're wanting in your life, imagine that that's the audience. You want the audience walking out of that movie, whistling the theme song. It's like, wow, that was a really uplifting movie. And now your goal is to rewrite, re reverse engineer the feelings back into your childhood. So we want to go back and give a, a, a convincing backstory to the feelings that you want the audience to be leaving the movie with so that the character has always lived that life. The character's childhood is filled with those same feelings that you're walking out of the movie with. So 
that's kind of the the quick shortened version of that how does that does that sound is that helpful in any way thanks steve um natasha would you like me to unmute you or you want to put in the chat um if that was helpful or if you need more clarification um yeah that was really helpful actually um just uh, like I think one additional question would be, you know, you mentioned to Swasti earlier, like include fun, right? Like, um, so that would be one example or one emotion that you could put in. Uh, so I was just looking for like other suggestions for like, say, say confidence. Oh, right? yeah. awesome. Yep. So, so it, 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 using the same analogy. So think about method acting, if that, if that word means anything to you. So, uh, method actors are people who like stay in character throughout the entire production. So uh, borrow some method acting techniques. Who do you know in your mind, whether it's a movie actor or just somebody that you know in your own life, that is somebody that represents confidence to you? Oprah. Good. Now, what I want you to do is to imagine that you're going to step in and become Oprah. Right. What does it feel like to be Oprah? And just allow yourself to feel like what it feels like to be Oprah. And what does it feel like to walk down the street being Oprah? I remember doing this long, this is something I did back when I was in college. And I was in that place of needing to feel that confidence. And I was like, oh, I'm on a new university. Nobody knows me. I, <laughs> I just started walking through campus pretending I was John Wayne. And okay. John Wayne has that gate, you know, he has that certain strut and I'm just walking through the campus and I'm like, you know, pretending, you know, it just, you can take on the feeling of that. So catch the feeling of that. And then can you also re uh, put that feeling of confidence into childhood references that are there? Can I think you... that's the, that's the tricky part. Okay. So <laughs> what would, what would, so then you look for the blocks. What would stop you from giving that same level of confidence to that little you? So imagining that feeling of being Oprah and giving that to the little you and having her walk through the front doors of the school or whatever, whatever scenario you want to put that confidence in. Okay. That's what we want to look for. So how do you know she can't be confident? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're asking me. Um. Yeah, if, if, you know, that's, what you, if you, if there's something there now, we can work with it, or if that's what you want to be looking for, the blocks that would say, because literally, it's just a neural pathway. Okay. You, you, remember, you're the writer, the director, the producer, and it's like, you don't like that scene, rewrite it. But if there's something there that says, if there's a subconscious block, if there's some memory that has some emotional charge, then it may be that we have to work on that specifically that. and bring right. the, the emotional charge down around that. Okay. So one, one uh, suggestion, as you said, uh, um, borrow from somebody who is already feeling or whatever, um, showing up those particular characteristics. Yes. Yeah, so it, for example, I had some difficulty imagining that same level of confidence as a little uh, it, going through my the doors of my elementary school, and um, f for whatever reason, I, the 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 character that I used was Neo from um, the, the movie the The Matrix. So <laughs> I, I I gave that little me a black trench coat and black sunglasses and that feeling of being able to to walk in and just you know change everything in the in in my elementary school just felt really you know empowering so mm -hmm. you know and as i'm talking about it now you know it's like i literally have goosebumps you know thinking about how powerful i am walking through <laughs> you know yeah. so it's just creating that new neural pathway and then rehearsing those scenes you know run make sure that you run the characters through the you know the rehearsal of those scenes until the show feels really really tight okay thank you you bet that help, that help natasha it does absolutely it thanks very good you're very welcome all right everybody oh and uh another one another question here it says um 
Carrie says, "'Tis the season for scary movies. What advice would you give to someone who watches something frightening before bed and can't sleep? Very good question. Steve, you want? Uh, yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna borrow from Bob Newhart. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and if if those of you who haven't gone to check this one out, it you know Bob Newhart video, just Google Bob Newhart. Stop it. Uh, it's a six minute long sketch. But ultimately, <laughs> the advice is stop it. <laughs> so, so that's the, that's the funny version. <laughs> and now uh, I want to. I'd I'll um, just uh, sort of elaborate on that. So, first, uh, first answer is don't D don't watch scary movies before bed. Okay, or, or at all if possible. So I know that it's like oh, Halloween, this is what we do, but you still have a choice as to whether you uh, allow yourself to do that or not. Now, I also know that sometimes you are in a situation where someone else is watching and you can't avoid it. All right. And if that's the case, then uh, what I would say is, Watch your, be very, very aware of while you're watching it, what your brain is doing. So bearing in mind the brain can't tell the difference between reality and imagination, you want to keep bringing your, bringing your attention to something specific. So keep those stress chemicals down. So you could, for example, be, um, uh, what I used to do is remind my, you know, look at it from an acting point of view, you know, appreciate the performances um, you know, critique the script and the special effects, that helps. Um, or keep your mind on happy stuff. Keep your mind, you know, surrounded by your color and that kind of thing, or start to find it funny. Now, in addition to that, I would say if you've done that, if you watched a scary movie, if you couldn't avoid watching it, and so you've watched it, two things you can do. Number one, watch something funny straight afterwards or something uplifting or that feels good so that you're bringing your focus. Don't go to bed with stress chemicals in your system because that's not going to, you know, that's not going to help. So do whatever it takes to get back into a feel-good state before you go to bed. And then if you find that your mind won't let go of something from the movie, then address that. So, you know, okay, so what's, what's wrong with that particular thing from this movie, this thing that keeps popping into my head? and then do the physical sensation, do the allowing. So where in my body do I feel this reaction and take the meaning out of it and what allow the physical sensation and then where in my childhood is this coming from? Where, where am I trying? And it won't necessarily be the same topic, but it'll be the same um, feeling and change it to the opposite, positive and empowering. So think of your mind referring to the scary movie as a dog that keeps chasing a rabbit. You just got to keep bringing it back calmly and patiently and lovingly. Keep bringing your focus back to the um, back to your color or something you love or something you're looking forward to or something fun. So, you know, a lot of people go, oh, it's like my mind. So, you know, you think of your mind has a mind of its own, but it's it's your mind and you are still it doesn't always feel like that, but you are still in control of where you're putting your focus, which neural networks are firing at that time. So no matter how much your mind keeps wandering off or things keep popping into your head, when that happens, when your mind wanders or when you notice your mind has wandered or that thing has popped into your head, right then is when you have a choice. So you may not have a choice if it's happening spontaneously, but you have a choice as soon as you notice it. What do I do as soon? So it's those that question that I um, that that I uh, shared the other day is what happens when I try. So I'm trying to focus on happy stuff, and what happens when I try and do that? My mind goes to this. Well, then just keep bringing it back. It's okay. So I hope that helps. But the most important top priority is don't <laughs> don't watch scary movies. Okay, if you can avoid it. So does that help, Carrie? Let us know if you need more clarification or more help with that, okay? And uh, um, if, uh, yeah, um, Ilya, 
would like to add something from the discussion with Natasha. Absolutely. I've unmuted you, uh, Ilya. Hi. 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 Um, I was thinking, she was talking about um, 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 borrowing this confident feeling of Oprah. And I was thinking, like, what if she, and anyone else can do it, um, uh, what if you just borrow that feeling and would notice what is it make, um, what is it that Oprah, yes. what is it that makes Oprah confidence, uh, oh. confident? And then give that to your parents. And then imagine that you as a little child were friends with the little Oprah and your parents teach you and the little Oprah whatever it is that makes them confident and then you then become confident as little children and create a fun scene. And while growing up, Oprah is admiring you for being confident. And if that's not enough, then put this same scene in the childhood of your grandparents and parents. But yeah, I just wanted to add that. Um, um. Ilya, that is brilliant. I love that. That is so, so brilliant and so powerful. And it's such a brilliant example of your ability to take what we teach and make it even more. So <laughs> thank you so much for sharing that because that really is just brilliant. She's so, gonna have a she's gonna have an amazing movie studio, isn't she? <laughs> well, I want to. Okay, so if and I want to add something else as well because um, this was, of course, especially to Natasha, but it, it, it can apply to everyone. Um, and with just being creative with simple things. So I was watching um, the Adams Family movie, yeah. the ones from the early '90s, and you might think, well, the Adams Family, that's not something I want to put in my childhood. Mm -hmm. But then I just tend to look with a different eye. And then I saw Gomez and Morticia looking at each other in a very passionate and romantic way. And then Gomez said to Morticia, oh, mi amore. And I was like, oh, I want that scene. So now I put like in my childhood, we have this um, party at a house and it's we all dressed up like the Adams family and my parents looked at each other like Gomez and Morticia are looking at each other so it can be just a simple scene from even a scary or whatever movie just pick out something you know and just copy it completely in your childhood um, yes oh uh Ilya that is just fantastic you are really brilliant at this <laughs> And thank you so much for sharing it because I know that that's going to have, you know, that's going to level up a lot of people. Good You're job. Welcome. Thank you, Ilya. All right. So I'm aware of the time. So let's go into the targeting now. So everyone take it. So Steve, if you could send me the target, please. And everyone take a deep breath and either close your eyes or leave them open, whichever you prefer. And go into your superpower state, however you normally do that. Repeating your word or phrase, or using your anchor, or by focusing in on everything you love and appreciate about your subject. Very good and feel your heart opening, that expansion feeling in your chest as that light or energy shines out from you and allowing that light or energy to spread down to your toes, up to the top of your head and out to your fingertips. So you're now full of that light, that energy, that love. Very, very good. And then allow that light or energy to fill each of the 50 trillion cells that make up your body, loving each one just for existing. And noticing how each cell of your body is producing that light, that energy, that love itself. So there's that two-way flow between you and your cells, pure, unconditional love. Very good. And now allow that light or energy to fill your subject. 
and then imagine your subject either doesn't want to be with you or is uh, doesn't have the qualities that you love and admire and keep them filled with that light, that energy anyway. Very good. And now let's go to Cheryl. Fill Cheryl with this light, this energy. From the tips of her toes to the top of her head and out to her fingertips. Love Cheryl, just for existing. Very good. And allow that light, that energy to overflow from Cheryl and fill her health. Everything to do with her health, no matter what. So whatever her health is, love it all anyway, shining this light into any darkness, loving every cell of her body, every part of her body, no matter what, exactly as it is, without, without judgment, without expectations, just pure love. Very good. And now to Lisa. Fill Lisa with this light, this energy, from the tips of her toes to the top of her head and out to her fingertips, love Lisa just for existing. Very good. And allow that light, that energy to overflow from Lisa and fill the election outcome and financial situations. So whatever happens, so Lisa's target is a peaceful election, but we're going to fill it all, whether it's peaceful or not. Whatever happens leading up to it, whatever the results are, everybody involved, no matter what, shining this light into any darkness, loving it all anyway, filling every person who's involved, every person who's reacting to whatever, shining this light into all the darkness and loving everything and everyone exactly as they are, no judgment, no expectations. And I know that's a huge challenge for a lot of people, but if you can manage that, you will level up dramatically in your power. So shine your light brightly into all the darkness. Good job. Now to Swasti. Fill Swasti with this light, this energy. From the tips of her toes to the top of her head and out to her fingertips. Love Swasti just for existing. Very, very good. Good job. And now to carry. Fill Carrie with this same light, this energy. From the tips of her toes to the top of her head and out to her fingertips. Love Carrie, just for existing. There we go, good job. And now to everyone who's off camera today, and those who are watching the recording, fill all of them with this light, this energy, this love, just for existing, no judgment, no expectations. And allow that light, that energy to overflow to each person and fill their lives, everything, everyone, every event, every circumstance, every experience, shining this light into any darkness, loving everything anyway, feeling that power. Good job. And now your yourself later today, fill that version of you with light and energy and love exactly as you are, whatever you'll be doing, experiencing or feeling, love that version of you anyway and surge. Very good, and surge again. Good job, very good. You can open your eyes if you haven't closed. 
And so a little reminder that from Monday, so November 2nd, we will be uh, in the subscription group. So for those watching the recording, um, just check the description below and you'll find the link there to sign up. And so everybody who's, uh, who's signed up, we will see you on Monday, same time. Uh, there will be a new link. So if you've, if you've signed up, you will have got the link to the group, uh, the private subscription group, Facebook group. Just uh, go there and in that group, we will post the new Zoom link for these sessions. All right. So lots of love to all of you. And for those who aren't in the subscription group, of course, remember, you can still watch these free videos as many times as you want and still reach out to us for help in, uh, in our Facebook, in our public Facebook group. We're still here to support you. All right. Lots of love to all of you. Have a fabulous weekend. Bye bye now. To you too. <laughs> Bye.